Please, I must see Mr. and Mrs. Valentine. What for? Well, I've got something to give them. There are now. I'll take it. Oh, no. I've got to do it myself. Not a chance, lady. Nobody's allowed backstage but the actors. That's the rule, and I ain't going to break it. In the days of yore, a little angel waiting by a little cabin door. Lordy, lordy, how I pine just to be back in Caroline. Way down south of the Mason Dixon line, with my I've tried. Why, I've got something to give them. Oh, why didn't you tell me? A new gag, eh? Hey, Bill, take these down. Here, you can. Did somebody lose a baby? Wise guys, who put this baby to basket, huh? Don't look at me, I ain't done nothing. Whose yeah. baby is it? Did a new car be wrapped? Oh, somebody's kidding. Yeah, probably you, huh? Wise guy, you're comedians putting a baby in a basket. What's that? Is that a laugh, huh? Sweet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a note here. Oh, sweet. Dear Joe and Kit, I've asked my landlady to bring little Wendy to you. The doc says my time's just about up, but as long as I know the baby's in your hands, I don't mind joining Flossie. Goodbye, your pal. It's Barney O'Hara's baby. It is Barney. But she's got Flossie's eyes. You remember how pretty she was? Yeah, she and Barney were a beautiful team. Gee, they were marvelous. Well, what are we going to do with her? We're going to keep her. <laughs> She got anything? Why, baby, you're a standout. Mr. Wadabunch, I'll pull you hand out. But I'm gonna stand right here and say that I wish you were a million miles away. <laughs> Funny, I feel that way, too. Is that so? Baby, take a boo. 
Oh, our act was awful up to now. Baby, take a bow. Everybody's asking me, who's that bunch of personality? I'm presenting you right now. Daddy, take a bow. Everybody wants to know, who's that great big handsome Romeo? I'm presenting you right now. Daddy, take a bow. Hear them whispering. Hasn't he got everything? He's a standout. Listen to the compliments they hand out. Let me stand right up and say, who's the one brings mother all his pay? I'm presenting you right now. You know what I was thinking? Well, first let me get used to the idea that you've been thinking at all. Well, what? You remember when they straightened out Barney O'Hara's affairs and they found out that he'd made half the payments on that farm up there in New England? Yes, and we're trying to get rid of it. Yeah, well, maybe that's where we're wrong. Maybe we ought to keep up those payments. For what? Well, so we could have a place where we could all settle down. You know, retire. Are you crazy? It takes money to retire. Well, we got a bank account, ain't we? Yeah, thanks to Wendy, but it's not enough to retire on, so forget it. Ah, oh, listen, kid. Let's give her something that we've never really had. A home, huh? Maybe that's the way Barney figured it for Wendy. Maybe that's why he picked out the farm. Oh, well, sure it is. It's up to us to go through with it. What do you say, honey? Oh, it's a pipe dream, Joe. <laughs> I can just see you in overalls. Now, busting sods and nobody to give you a hand except the cows. And me in a gingham apron, sweeping and cooking and making beds every day. Well, maybe we could afford a maid. We could not. I guess I can hold up my own end. Then you'll go for it, huh? Well, we'll talk about it in five years. Oh, uh, five years. In the meantime, you better start making those payments. Look, I'll write that lawyer tonight. You'll write him a letter. Remember, we're going to be New England farmers. <laughs> Listen, Wendy, honey, it's going to be a little tough for about five years, see? But after that, wow! <laughs> London's Piccadilly, when it was time for tea. We walked along the Champs Elysees, the pride of gay Paris. You could rave about your Broadway and Times Square. Come on along and let me show you the grandest thoroughfare. Hop a bus, take a car, hail a cab, and there you are on Fifth Avenue. Every Joe, every Jane walks along the dreamer's lane on Fifth Avenue. That's Fifth Avenue. Where they stop, window shop, and their hopes are so high. Pricing rings, trippy things that they can't afford to buy. But, but they, they smile, smile, they don't care. Everyone's a millionaire when you're strolling on Fifth Avenue. Oh, the 
Shops, small cafes, a cathedral, and then Central Park, coffee and Woolworths five and ten. What a street, what a thrill! Say you haven't lived until you've been strolling on Fifth Avenue. You've been strolling on, you've been strolling on Fifth Avenue. I know you're very anxious to see the movie, but if you don't mind, I'd like to... Oh, Wendy, you go ahead and tell them. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, just a minute, mister. Aren't you staying for the picture? <laughs> My goodness. He must have come just to see the vaudeville. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a regular curtain speech. You see, this is our last performance. And tonight, we're saying goodbye to stage and show business and leaving for our farm up in New England. But before we go, we want to say goodbye and, just as once, show what we think of you. Will everyone please stand up? Come on, oh, come on everybody, get up. Come on, come on Just this up. once, come on, everybody up there, too. Up. That's it. Folks, it's hard to say goodbye to a good friend. And that's what you've been to Dad, Mom, and me. You've applauded when you liked us. And even given us a little hand when you didn't. You've been swell. And we'll never forget you. Because, honest to goodness, we could never have brought you as much happiness as you brought us. So, now it's our turn to applaud you. Yes, I've got the ticket. Are you sure the train leaves at 11.15, not 10.15? Has everything come from the hotel? Oh, did you leave a forwarding address for the mail? Now, listen, Kip, will you stop worrying? Leave everything to me. I'll get you there, all right. There's no use getting excited. I never forget anything. Hey, Dad, don't you remember? Our dressing room is downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Tim, come on. All right, all right. Hi, hello. <laughs> Getting ready for the big outdoors. Uh, got your uh, cookbook, uh, Kip? Well, if I haven't, we'll starve to death. Well, boy, cracky, if it ain't for the Valentine and her folk. Well, Missy, how's the crop this year? Well, Ezra, I ain't just saying it's good, and I ain't just saying it's bad. I'm just saying, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you better hurry with your packing, Wendy. All right, Mom. Uh, she's got the gift of laughter. It's a crime taking that kid out of show business. You're throwing away a great career. Oh, we're going to have a career, all right. We'll just be gathering eggs instead of laying them. <laughs> I can just see you three as farmers. It gets awful lonesome up in them thar hills. After a couple of months on the farm, you'll be happy to play a split week in Peoria. Oh, we'll be all right. Dad and I have been studying scientific farming from these government pamphlets. You'll find out there's only one life for you, and that's show business. What kind of show business, Dave? Five and six a day, build under a double feature and a couple of shorts? <laughs> oh, I know it ain't the paradise it used to be, but it's still a pretty good game. Oh, it ain't the game, Dave. It's what goes with it. Listen, we've been in every town in the USA, and in every town we've been strangers. When we ride on trains at night, we see lights shining in people's homes. But where do we live? Huh, in a lower berth. Listen, we never had a, had a chance to vote yet. Not even once. But now we're going to a town where we ain't going to be strangers. You understand? Yes, and Wendy's going to lead a normal life. You know, grow up like other children. Have a home with friends her own age. Yes, her kid's going to have neighbors that she can drop in on and pass the time of day with. And Dad's going to be the leading citizen of the community. Aren't you, Dad? You said it. Listen, when the Valentines walk down the street, they're going to wave hello to everybody. And everybody's going to wave right back to them. 
For the first time in our lives, we're going to live like real people. Your cab's here, Joe. Oh, thank you, baby. What? So long, gang. Mm. Best of luck. Oh, don't forget to write. All right, if you come around our way at mealtime, don't forget to drop in. I'll be doing three shows a day in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know our address, just ask for the mayor. That'll be Dad. That's me. Well, we promise it's the day. We promise it's the day. man, Joe. Oh, he must be around here someplace. Pardon me, mister, but have you seen a man named Jeb Spark? You see him every day. I mean, here at the station. He's our farmhand who was supposed to meet us. Well, if Jeb's going to meet you, he'll be here, and let's see. Thirty seconds. How do you know? The train was early. Oh. Theater. You must be in the wrong town. There ain't no theater here. There isn't. What do you do for entertainment? Oh, just sit around and wait for somebody to make a fool of themselves. That doesn't sound like much fun. Maybe, because you ain't the one that's doing the setting. <laughs> I don't see any town. Where is it? Right over that hill three miles. It's a long walk. <laughs> Jeb Sparks? Yep. Why, well, I'm glad to know you. This is Miss Valentine. This is little Wendy. Howdy. The train got here early, didn't it? Yep. Well, don't let that worry you, Jeb. Nope. <laughs> well, say, by the way, if you got somebody to deliver these trunks... <laughs> Chatterbox. Well, hop in, girl. Which way is the farm? The other side of town. Is it very far? No. Did you order that list of groceries? Yep. Well, have a good crop this year, Jeb? Well... They ain't saying yep, and they ain't saying no. Just saying maybe. <laughs> <laughs> He's stealing your stuff, honey. <laughs> Sunday school for you, Wendy. Yes, Mom. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a town hall, ain't it, Jeff? Yep. When's the next town meeting? Tomorrow night. You hear that, kid? A town meeting where a man can stand up and have his say. Real old-fashioned democracy. <laughs> Darn right it's old-fashioned. This ain't no New Deal country. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Jeff? Nothing, except we're here. We're here. Oh, it's beautiful. It's even pretty in the pictures you showed us. Look at that barn. It looks exactly like a, a barn. Oh, Mommy. Joe, did you see her face? my kitchen. This is it. Hey, girls, get a load of this chair. Oh, man. And the silence. I've never heard anything like it. Oh, look. It's all windows. Double exposure. Wendy, Joe, come look at this beautiful stove with two ovens. Oh, this is for me. I think I'll pitch a tent right here. Yes, sir, this is for me. The farmer's in the dell. The farmer's in the dell.
Trains. <laughs> no, kid, honey. No more trains, no. never. <laughs> oh, what a day, what a day. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Joe. What? We said we'd start out right. Tell Wendy today. Tell her what? You know very well what. About us not being her real parents. Oh, that. Oh, sure. Why don't you go ahead and tell her? Oh, no. You, you said you'd do it. All right, can't I change my mind? Listen, anyway, you're the guy that knows human nature better than I do. Why don't you tell her? Joe Ballantyne, you know very well you're the understanding one. I'll tell you, we'll toss a coin. <laughs> Fine father. Can't even tell his own child she's an orphan. Hmm. How would you like to find out maybe after all these years that I wasn't your husband, huh? Would you stop clowning? Listen, I ain't clowning, I'm afraid, that's all. Suppose we don't tell her. Oh, that's no good. She'd find out sooner or later from strangers, and that'd be worse. Yes, I know, Joe. Well, come on. Call it. Heads. Go on in now. All right, all right. I'll tell her. You think I'm afraid to talk to my own kid? Listen, I'll just say, Wendy, the time has come. All right, don't tell me. Tell her. All right, all right. I'll tell you. Oh, uh, I gotta get that thing fixed. to wake you too? Oh, uh, Wendy, the time has come. Yes, I know, for breakfast. I'm starved. Mom, you look simply scrumptious in that gingham dress. You're the prettiest and bestest of all. And you too, Dad. You look like a million yourself. In fact, we look like three million. Listen, Wendy, this is gonna be tough, honey, very tough. Sure, I know. It's always tough on a farm. But we can lick it, the three of us. We've done it before. Oh, but Wendy, listen. And we'll do it again. I'm so happy. I guess I've never been so happy. We mustn't let anything spoil it. Come one, come all. See and hear the three Valentines in their latest creation, down on the farm. <laughs> With a mom and dad like you, and this house and the farm and everything, I'm just about the luckiest girl in the whole world. But, Wendy, honey, I'm trying to tell you. What, Dad? Well, I'm trying to tell you that you got a table to set. Now, go on, get out of here, will you? <laughs> Oh, gee, kid, I couldn't tell her. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. You are? I'm kind of scared of the way she might take it. Oh, honey. Well, come on, let's have that breakfast. I can hardly wait to get my hands on that plow. Oh, good. <laughs> all right, Lev, Lev, oh, yeah, you yeah. kill me, you... Well, Jeb, we all set? Yep. Gee, I've been waiting a long time for this. Well, you better let me finish plowing the hill. You'll find it smoother going up on the flat. Now, listen, Jeb, this is my farm, and by golly, I'm going to farm it. Put them things on me. Yep. Now you just get on over there and watch. All right. Get up. Oh, yeah, this is right down my back alley. I'll probably plow about 50 or 60 acres today. Whoa, 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 Bessie. Come on, Bessie, stay over here in the ballpark. Throw me out a straight man here. Come on, Bessie, cooperate. Come around here, will you? Hey, you better go that way. Don't tell me which way to go. I know where to go. Come on around here, Bessie. Come here. Bess, come here, Bessie. Anybody can plow them straight lines, but when you make them round like that, you can plant more in them. If you don't think so, you go ahead and measure them. <laughs> That's what they call scientific farming. Whoa. Yeah. Anyway, that plow's crooked. Ah, this is the life. A hard day's work in a field, then home to a great dinner. Oh, a great dinner. I only hope you'll be able to eat it. Oh, I know it's going to be awful. But don't you kids be foolish, because if it isn't any good, we'll open a can of beans. Now. Oh, let's see it. 
And you open it, Wendy. Mm. I haven't the courage. Mom, it looks just like the ad in the Ladies Home Journal. Now, if we're going to make that meeting at the town hall. Howdy, folks. Hello? Hello? <laughs> well, we're here. Ah, good evening, ladies. Good evening. Oh, isn't it a lovely evening? I, they're shy, aren't they? <laughs> oh, good evening there, stranger. Say, tell me, what kind of a crop do you think they're going to have this year? Ask me in September. What is it? <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> ah, I'm awful glad to see you tonight, stranger. Huh? Yeah? Oh, we certainly do like your little town, Mr. Um, uh, what did you say your name was? I don't think I said. Chatterbox is quite a character, ain't he? <laughs> don't you remember me, Mr. Station Master? Wait, well, yeah. Well... Hello, Jeff. Hello. What's the matter with all these people? Have they got dyspepsia? No. Are they always like this? Yeah. Good evening, folks. Makes my blood boil every time I read that newspaper of his. Stonefield Democrat. Going the same way as party. I suppose he'll start drinking, too. Newspaper man. <laughs> uh, pardon me, mister. But could you tell me how soon the meeting begins? Eight. Promptly at eight. Thank you so much. You see, we're strangers. We just moved here. We're the Valentines. Oh, sure. Where's your mother and father? I'd like to get an interview. Oh, are you a newspaper man? Well, there seems to be some question about that. Mom and Dad right over there. I'll introduce you. If I'd known we were going to be interviewed, I'd have brought our scrapbook. But that's all right. Dad won't tell you everything. You'll like him. Everybody does. Here's a reporter who wants to interview us. Mighty glad to know you, Mr. Valentine. Hello. Mrs. Valentine, I'm Mike Shave, the Democrat, county's leading weekly. Democrat up in this part of New England? Yes, sir. You're looking at the editor, reporter, and typesetter all rolled into one. Well, tell me something. Do they read the paper here? Uh, they've got to. Only one in town. Well, Mr. Shea, we really don't want any publicity. Well, now, kid, I wouldn't go as so far as to say that. We, Neither uh... would I. You see, I promised Mr. Shea. Why, your news. You people are an asset to this town, and believe me, it can certainly use a few assets. Well, thank you very much, my friend. You might say that we're going to try and fulfill our duties as good oh, citizens Judy. of the community. Uh, pardon you might me, also quote later. me that... He's nice, isn't he? Judy, I've got to talk to you. I haven't time. After the meeting, then? I'm sorry, but we're staying for the church social. And after that, we're going to listen to a little short wave down at my radio store. I don't think Judith wants to talk to you, Shay. Oh, now, Freddie, put yourself in her place and, why, you'd be just palpitating to talk to me. Are you palpitating, Judy? Not so you could notice it. Well, there's your answer. Fred, please, I'll be with you in a moment. Well, what do you want? I want to get this whole mess straightened out, Judy. You've been dodging me for a week now. I don't intend to stand here and let you insult What if I did print an editorial calling your Aunt Hester a museum piece? <laughs> she is a museum piece. But what I say about her, no matter what it is, it shouldn't make any difference between you and me. Look, Mike, what you said about my Aunt Hester is only part of it. It's everything you've been doing since you took over your father's paper. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I know. You had to print what you pleased. Save the town from stagnation. You wouldn't settle down like a normal person. No, not you. That's not you talking, Judy. That's your Aunt Hester. Would you like me to elucidate, young man? I don't think it'll be necessary, Aunt Hester. Good evening, ladies. Good, Good evening. evening. Fred. Shall we go in, Judith? I think we'd better find our seats. Will you excuse us? What a shame. Yeah, the plot's all twisted. Girl gets wrong, boy. We'll have to fix that up, Dad. If you ask me, that girl could use some good advice. Is, uh, Just who, may I ask, could use some good advice? Well, I was speaking about a cousin of mine from... Uh, yeah, a cousin was... we have in Topeka. He has some trouble with his mother-in-law. We were just talking about it. Uh, she must have been weaned on a pickle. Come on, Dad. It's town hall. Come on, let's go in. There used to be so much... The woman said, yes. You don't know enough to pound sand down a rat hole. Maybe so, but I know enough to stop talking once in a while. Stop your squabbling, Sam. 
A man's a right to speak his mind here, whether you agree with him or not. Go ahead, Pete. This bridge has got to be repaired before she collapses. Uh, how much will it cost? Well, Mr. Baldwin calculates it'll cost about $50. Then I say wait till she collapses. Now, that fella's wrong. Cost less to repair the bridge than it would to build a new one. <laughs> sure, Dad. You've got opinions. Why don't you say something? Anybody got any more to say about the proposition? Go on, John. Go on, Dad. All right, then. Matters defer to next year. Well, I guess that finishes the agenda. Yes, that finishes the agenda. Now, if someone will move to adjourn the town... Mr. Moderator. Yeah, Mr. Shea? Folks, you know I couldn't let a meeting go by without reminding you that there are still a few young people living in Stonefield. Or should I say vegetating? Yeah, and most of them ain't dry behind the ears yet. <laughs> Maybe so, but we don't claim to be suffering from dry rot. But we figure that's what ails Stonefield. Fellow citizens, we've got a real progressive program for our town. And it won't cost a great deal of money to put it into effect. Seems that being progressive and spending other people's money amounts to about the same thing. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what's keeping us broke. Tradition. You're all afraid to do anything any differently than your grandfathers did it. What's wrong with the way they did it? Nothing. Only they did it in another century. Now, I respect tradition as much as the next man. But I don't respect it when it stands in the way of progress. Now, let's get wise to ourselves. Let's realize that we're not living on a desert island, but right spang within the borders of a big, lively, up-and-coming nation, the United States. We've heard all this before, Mr. Shea. Well, anyway, for the record, I want to propose our usual resolution, that a board be appointed, no member of which may be over 30 years of age, to promote Stonefield as a tourist center, to attract new industries here, and in general, to make our town a more prosperous and progressive place in which to live. Terrific idea there, kid. Thanks, but we haven't got a chance. Mr. Moderator? Miss Appleby? Who is she? School teacher. Taught everybody here and she's still teaching them. I think it's about time to put a stop to all this nonsense. Ever since my forefather, Caleb Appleby, founded Stonefield, in the dear dead sacrificial days before the Revolutionary War, and down through the decades of American progression, we've managed to get along very nicely without factories or tourists, even without Michael Shea. However, since Michael and his supporters were once my pupils, I still cannot help but feel a certain responsibility for them. So, before their harebrained schemes to get rich quick lead them into serious trouble, I should like to remind them of the fundamentals they were taught at school. There's only one road to prosperity, and that's the rocky one. Hard work, diligence, and thrift. Thank you, Miss Appleby. And now to dispense with the matter. Mr. Moderator. Yeah? Mr. Uh... Valentine, Joe Valentine, you know. <laughs> Dad, give me your cannibal act. Oh, yes. Uh, getting up here tonight, it's my first night in town. It kind of makes me feel like the vegetarian that was addressing a bunch of cannibals that was having them for dinner. <laughs> uh, but don't get me wrong, folks. I'm, I like this town very much, and I'm, I'm really proud and happy to be a member of your little community. But the trouble with all you people is, well, you're still living in the horse and carriage age. <laughs> you go back so far that you think the young people should be seen and not heard. That's why you're wrong. The young people have the bright ideas. <laughs> uh, when young Shea here said that this town need waking up, well, he punched it right on the nose. Yes, sir. We ought to give this town a shot in the arm, put a new coat of paint on it. Uh, Shoulder to the wheel. Oh, uh, if, if we plunge in and put our shoulders to the wheel, why, we'll have people flocking in here from every state in the Union. Standing room only. Yes, there'll be standing room only. By that, I mean that the hotels will be crowded, the, well, the stores will be doing a land office business, and the real estate will be booming, and, well, the young folks will have a chance. Now, I want you all to know that we're here to do that very thing. Yes, sir, you can always call on the three Valentines. We are at your service. Folks, let us help you use showmanship. Let us help you bring happiness and a smile to the old town. <laughs> And I want to tell you that before we're through, why, we'll turn Stonefield into a hustling metropolis. And what I want to know, folks, are you with me? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, guys. Gee, Dad, that was just like a fireside chat. Well, you went to bed yourself. Mr. Moderator, 
Mr. Dakin? I reckon Stonefield is lucky. Mighty lucky to have a man like Mr. Ballantyne for a citizen. It isn't often a stranger can come along and show folks in a couple of minutes how they've been wrong for 150 years. I think we ought to thank Mr. Ballantyne for giving us a shot in the arm, if you know what I mean. So I think it's only fitting that we appoint Mr. Ballantyne a one-man chamber of commerce to investigate conditions and report to us. Folks, I never dreamed that I was going to be on the being ripped tonight. And I want to assure you that, well, this is a great thrill for me. This is a greater thrill to me than when I played the palace for the first time in New York City, New York. <laughs> oh, yes. I want you all to know that I'm your friend. And when you bunk into me on the street, I want you to come up and say, hello, Joe, what do you know? <laughs> oh, kid, honey, this is it. Everything we ever dreamed of. Just think, Joe, a kid of ours growing up in a place like this, not having to go through what we did. She'll know everybody. Marry a nice young fellow in town, maybe the banker's son. When she has kids, they'll grow up here, get married. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just an old sourpuss, that's all. <laughs> Don't you think I'm a little young to be considering getting married? Here, yeah, you're supposed to be asleep. I know. You just want to get rid of me. Selling me off to the first bidder. Honey, there ain't enough money in the whole world to buy you. Sounds like a song cue. Well, not to disappoint you, I think I'll sing. I wouldn't take a million for a girl like you. I wouldn't take a million for the things you do. If they offered me a mansion in the finest part of town, if you were not in that mansion, then I would turn it down. I wouldn't take a million for the twinkle in your eye. I'd rather win a smile from you than win the Nobel Prize. If I were just a pauper and I didn't have a sou, I still would have a million if I just had. Daniel? Hi. Hello, folks. Oh, look, there's Mrs. Hubbard. <laughs> Looks like no one stays home on Saturday afternoons. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Stonebreaker. Not bad, eh? We've been in town a month. We know everybody. That's so, Dad. We're irresistible. Oh, Joe, do I look all right? Honey, you never look better. Listen, when that lady's auxiliary get a load of you, they're going to do nip-ups all over that church. <laughs> well, listen, you run along. I'll see you later, honey. Hey. Huh. Wish me luck. Comes Valentine now. Hello, yeah. fellas. Well, any news, Hello, neighbor? Joe. How's the Chamber of Commerce doing? Oh, I can't wait to tell you about it. I, uh, I wouldn't pass it up for a stack of greenbacks. <laughs> Hello, Mike, my lad. Hello, Joe. Why, you're just the one I'm looking for. I want to tell you, I got the Valentine plan all set up and ready for the next edition of your paper. It's going to rock this town like TNT. Ah, oh, that's swell, Mr. Valentine. Be the biggest news the Democrat ever printed. Yeah, did you tell Dakin that horse he sold you had the heaves? Oh, that horse didn't have the heaves. That's just a bad cold, that's all. She'll be all right. Well, come on, we got more important things to talk about than a horse. See, did you sell him that broken down nag? No, I wouldn't talk if I were you. Not after the way you took him with that rock crusher that wouldn't crack a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> And then... Last year, she had the measles. Now, she's had everything except the mumps. The Wendy had the mumps in Denver two years ago. We were playing a split week there. Oh, but strictly the big time, you understand. Joe always thought of that. He used to tell the agent, don't bother me with none of your small-time bookings. It's nothing but the best for the Valentines. <laughs> and it always was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Oh, maybe I talk too much for a new member. Oh, no, most interesting, I assure you. As I was going to say, it's my opinion that all epidemics come from the city. Nothing ever happens to Sarah except when she's been to visit her cousin in the city. Well, that's something else for Joe to worry about. 
Joe, you see, the whole point of his plan, it, you know, <laughs> he calls it the Valentine plan, is to attract city people here, you know, with fairs and ski carnivals and an apple blossom festival in the spring. Oh, how exciting. Why, your husband's quite a man, Mrs. Valentine. How did you happen to marry him? Well, I tell him that I must have been under an anesthetic. <laughs> but between us girls, <laughs> oh, I fell for him like that. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, he was hoofing then on the gaiety wheel. And I was in the chorus, you know, third from the end. <laughs> they picked me out to do a specialty with him. Well, <laughs> the routine called for a split. <laughs> I did a split, all right, and so did my tights right up the back. <laughs> oh, you should have been there. It was something, really. Oh, oh, dear. Well, I got off the stage all right. I don't know how. And somehow, I don't know, the next week we were married and broke. But when you're crazy about a man, money doesn't make any difference. Nothing does, does it? And do you feel, Mrs. Ballantyne, that your own experience qualifies you as an expert on marriage? Oh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. But one thing I know, a girl shouldn't let a good chance go by. They only come once in a lifetime. I always say that men are like ships that pass in the night. If a young girl isn't careful, she's liable to miss the boat, and then where is she? Where is she? Left on the docks with the other old maids. Oh, no offense, Miss Appleby. Oh, uh, we were talking about germs. Uh, yes, if I may be permitted to say, epidemic... Well, Mom, did you have a good time? Grand. Girls, it was simply delightful. What will be the subject next week? I'm sure you'll be able to decide that. Oh, do you mean it's Mom's turn? Yes, it is, Wendy. Oh, thank you. Hello, Kit. Judy, you two know each other, don't you? <laughs> oh, why don't you kids kiss and make up, huh? Remember what I told you, Judy, about missing the boat? Too bad Wendy isn't a few years older. She'd grab Mike off herself. That would gum the plot all up, wouldn't it, Dad? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, hello, Miss Appleby. Well, Mr. Ballantyne and the Wendy. Yes, we were just telling Mike uh, and yes, Judy. I heard. Well, we better be getting along. Might I suggest that the way to get along in Stonefield is to keep one's nose out of other people's affairs? Come along, Judith. Well, thanks for the good intentions, anyway. Yes, there's a well-known place that's paved with them. Well, let's get going. Oh. <laughs> Your pop never misses a prop. You I, I, I walk in a tree. How do you like that? Put a tree. <laughs> Routine when they get a load of what Wendy's dished up for them. It'll lay him in the aisle. Shh. I hope. I've hated this song ever since Hester drummed it into me ten years ago. As you all know, I have always been particularly insistent that those children so inclined be given free reign to express their talents. So in a few moments, we shall present this year's entertainment under the personal supervision of Mary Ann, Ann Parker. Oh, Wendy, you look scrumptious. I never saw you look so nice. Thank you. Do you think the safety pin will show Evelyn? No, I don't think so. Hope my pa don't get mad at me because I took his pants, especially his new ones. Don't worry, Jerry. Just be sure you don't lose them. Come here, kid. You see, Joe, we don't need to worry. The show is in good hands. Look, there's no reason to be scared. You'll love going out on the stage. And there's nothing to worry about, because they're all up there to like you. And when they do like you, a tingle goes up and down your spine like you never felt before. And, 
Oh, well, it's just the biggest thrill in the whole world. All right, kids, that's all. Now, let's go out there and wow them. Miriam, what does this mean? Miss Appleby, we wanted to surprise you. You certainly have. What are you doing in this, this get-up? It's for the vaudeville show. Vaudeville show? It was all Wendy's idea, Miss Appleby. I'm sure it was. And our mothers and fathers, too, I presume. Oh, you'll like it, Miss Appleby. Honestly, you will. And so will the audience. We're using all the surefire routines. Mom and Dad thought of that. Well, I think I must thank you for all the trouble you've gone to with my pupils. Oh, it wasn't anything. After all, with our experience, it was only natural for us to lend a hand. <laughs> and wait till you see the show, Miss Appleby. It's terrific. Why, I'm positive it'll tear the house down. <laughs> and I suppose you're equally positive that the people of this town were serious when they made you Chamber of Commerce. Well, what are you driving at? Just this, Mr. Valentine. Your whole existence in this town has been one big joke. Many people have found your efforts to run this town and everyone in it exceedingly funny. But there's a climax to every joke, and you've reached it. Well, of all the nerve. <laughs> Miss Appleby, I've been in show business for over 20 years, and in that time, I bunked into a lot of sour grapes, but really, you take the cake. <laughs> sure, she's down on us because you stole her thunder at the town meeting. Why, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> You're losing your grip on this town, Hester, and you know it. And you don't want this show to go on because you know that we're going to get the credit. I'm sorry for you, Hester, really sorry. Marianne, you may start the performance as soon as I finish my announcement. And I'll see to it that you get all the credit that you deserve. <laughs> oh, shut your blubbering, you big crybaby. <laughs> now let's go out there and show them. That's a girl. You go out there and show them. I have a little surprise for you. I have just discovered that this year, rather than the children, Mr. and Mrs. Valentine and their daughter, Wendy, have assumed charge of the second part of our recital and are entirely responsible for what you are about to see. I am sure you will fully appreciate this small sample of what our new friends are capable of doing for Stonefield.
It wasn't your fault. It's their fault. They're small, small people. So, you were positive your show would tear the house down. Perk up, Joey boy. You keep on plugging away and you'll be mayor of this town yet. <laughs> Why, with that wife and kid of yours out stumping for you, you'd be a lead pipe cinch. Joe! All right, Joe, he had it coming to him. Come on, kitten, Woody. Let's go home. All right, Mr. Dakin. Now that that's settled, I think we can get back to normal. Normal? Your idea of normal is being mean and vindictive. You've hurt the nicest family that's ever come here. And I wouldn't be like you or the rest of your frozen face oh, narrow minded old. Listen, Judy, you wanted me to change. But now it's your turn. If you ever make up your mind, let me know. Einstein couldn't figure this thing out. Oh, and I wanted to hear the friendly hour. Yeah, it's a fine thing when you got to depend on a radio for friendship. We could use a little friendship around here, no matter where it comes from. Ah, oh, you're right, kid. But maybe it wasn't their fault. I guess we just looked like queer fish to them, that's all. What a life. The most important audience we ever played to, and the only one we couldn't crack. What are you reading, honey? Variety. I'd nearly forgotten the language. Broadway does floppo as Biz dives. Hmm. Dave and Fanny Chambers were on a television program in Los Angeles last week. So what? I can remember when they were built under Costello's train seal. She can remember. Vaude wows them in Cleveland. Flicks legit takes back seat. Remember when we were held over in Cleveland for three weeks? I was in school there for so long, they voted me most apt to succeed. And that night, Dad got so mad at you, Mom, he spoiled the finish just because you bought that new dress. Spoiled the finish? Me? Kit was just in a hurry to get off to try it on. Didn't have a chance. You sent it back. Did I? Remember this one, Dad? Hop a bus, take a car, hail a cab, and there you are on Fifth Avenue. What fun we used to have. The trains, hotels, dressing rooms, the old gang. Mm, those were the days. Those were the days you wanted the cows and the chickens. Well, that's the way it goes. You always want something you haven't got. Then after you get it, you don't want it at all. So you want to go back? Sure I want to go back. And I bet we'll be better than ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're still a great little actress, honey. Your last speech proves that. Well, let's start warming up right now. Yeah, come on. Mom, let's make a clean entrance. OK, we'll pick it up where you come on. All right. And when you do your specialty, honey, Give it to him. Remember, you never missed a tap. I used to stand the wings and I, oh, just be swell here. This is a good stage. Now, listen. Yeah. Now, you do your best to put it on. I probably forgot my part. <laughs> Come on along and let me show you the grandest star of band. Hop a bus, take a car, hail a cab, and there you are on Fifth Avenue. Pricing rings, pretty things that they can't afford to buy. But, but they, they smile, smile, they don't care. Everyone's a millionaire when you're strolling on Fifth Avenue. Okay, 
that's enough, Wendy. Gee, it'll be great to get back in the old routine again, won't it? I can't wait. Neither can I. I'm going to start packing right now. Oh, gee, kid, honey, don't, please. What do we care if a bunch of hayseeds don't go for us? It's not for us, I mind. It's for her, after all we planned. Oh, don't worry about her. That kid's a trooper. She'll get along all right. Anyway, we had no right to keep her away from her career. She'll end up a star on Broadway. That's right, Joe. Broadway, bright lights, a big star. That's for her. Valentine's quit Stonefield. Well, what do you think of it, Eddie? It's a classic. And this stuff about with the Valentines goes the spirit of youth. Hits it right on the nose. There they are now. Oh. Hello, kid. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello. Joe. Hi, Getty. Hi. We just stopped in to say goodbye. Look at this, Joe. What? Oh. You should feel highly honored. Only two extras have ever been gotten out by the Democrat. One was when McKinley was shot, and that's the other. Gee, that's a great spread, Mike. Mm. Even if it is for our exit. Thanks, Mike. You know, this will do a lot of explaining to the old gang when they start ribbing us about coming back. That's just what Wendy said when she came in to say goodbye. Tell me, Mike, how does she seem to feel, you know, about going away? Wendy, why, she was tickled pink. She... Oh. Better take it easy, Wendy. This will be your fourth. You sure are looking blower in a whetstone. It's just a rain, Otis. It certainly is beating down. Uh, you can always count on these contraptions to go bluey just as you need them. Hurry, can. But I know they're leaving today. Effie said Jeb's bringing their trunks over to the station and they're going on the 418. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Well. I don't like to cast the first stone, but I must say a body can stand just so much. Mary Ann, the idea of those cheap, big mouth know it alls coming here trying to run us, stirring up the young people and everything. Well, Hattie, they didn't really hurt anybody. Oh, didn't they? Why, if it hadn't been for Hester Appleby, but. Yes, if it hadn't been for her and people like you, everybody here would be a lot happier. Maybe you're glad to see us go. But you're not half as glad as we are. You're mean and skimpy-minded. And besides, my mother and father are five million times better than all of you put together. Your mother and father. That's funny, isn't it, Ma? Mary Ann. Those Valentines aren't your real folks at all. You're just adopted. My pa's town clerk, and he told Ma, didn't he, Ma, that your pa died a long time ago and left you the farm. And do you know what your real name is? Wendy O'Hara. Mary Ann, you shouldn't have. Let her alone, Bertha. I always say the child should know anyway. Hmm. I knew about it all the time. It's just too bad, Mary Ann, that your mother didn't bring you up to be a nicer girl. You didn't know all the time, did you? All I've ever done was for me. Oh, there they are now. Here's my handkerchief. Thank you. Do I look all right? You look fine. Goodbye, Judy. Goodbye, Wendy. Take your last look, girls. I still say it's a sweet little town. Dad. What? Did you ever hear of a man named O'Hara? O'Hara? What? Did you ever hear of a man named O'Hara, kid? Who? O'Hara, Mom. Oh, O'Hara. Well, who said? I mean, why? Oh, oh nothing. Sure is raining. What were you saying about that man, Mr. O'Hara? Well, I saw Marianne in the drugstore, and and she said he was my father. 
I was afraid of this. Well, you see, honey, we were going to tell you all the time, only Joe thought that... Me? I wanted to tell you all the time, honey. Your mother here, well, kid, she thought it would be better if we... Now, Joe, don't say that. I mean, we didn't want to spoil anything. That's right, honey. We just didn't want to spoil anything. You see, we were playing in Baltimore. We were in Springfield when we... Let me tell her, Joe. All right. You see, Wendy, your mother and father were our best friends. Real troopers and fine people. God doesn't make them any better than Barney and Florence O'Hara. When your mother died, it broke your father's heart. When your father went to join her, he left you with us. We couldn't have loved you anymore if you'd been our own baby. We realized the time would come when we would have to tell you the truth. At first, you were too young to understand. And later, we were afraid of the way you might take it. We didn't want to hurt you. So you see, you had to find it out like this. Well, it, it was something of a shock. Naturally, you can't expect it. No, no, honey, we understand. Oh, Mom, Dad, I love you both more than ever. I wouldn't take a million for a mom and dad like you. Wouldn't take a million for the little things you do. If they offered me a mansion in the finest part of town. If you're not in that mansion, then I would turn it down. I wouldn't take a million for the moments we have known. I'd rather sit upon your knee than on a royal throne. If I could rub Aladdin's lamp to make a wish come true, I'd wish that every kid could have a mom and dad like you. in this way, but we have to bring the kids in someplace. Well, for Mr. Valentine, we wouldn't have got here at all. They'll have to stay here tonight. Take them into the living room and get the fire lighted. All right. I'll, I'll get, get the room ready. Gosh, I'm wet. Come on, Come on, get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Come on now, kids. Now hurry up and get on these shoes and stockings. Come on. All right, Joe, help me. It'll be nice and warm in a minute. Mom, be sure to wear him when she sees my dress. Stay on the road, Joe. All right, all right, honey. Don't worry.
Come on, we better go back to the fire. What do you think I'm doing? I didn't fight my way through this hurricane for three hours to call on your Aunt Hester. Phone lines are all done. I had to come here and see if there was anything left of you. I was worried about you, Judy. Oh, that's swell, honey. Oh, oh, honey, you haven't had much sleep. Oh, I'm all right, Mom. Where's your milk, Susie? Is that it? Oh, now, look, you have to drink every bit of your Hello, milk. Judith. Hello, Judith. Oh. Well, the kids are here, sure enough. Jerry, son. Jerry, boy. You all right, son? Sure, Pop. Say, your ma's just having cat fits. Well, Aunt Hester, don't you think you should tell them what the Valentines are really like? Don't bother, Judy. They've had enough trouble without us Carson anymore. They don't like us and... Well, Joe, what happened to you? Did you break your leg taking bowels? Dad got hurt saving Jerry. Never mind, Wendy. One for him, Dad, I wouldn't be here. He saved all of us. That's right, Mr. Dakin. Well, I didn't mean... Yes, you did. And you don't have to try to get out of it now. We know how you feel. All of you. Ever since we came here, we wanted you to like us, and we wanted to like you, but you wouldn't give us a chance. Well, you don't have to worry. We're going away, aren't we, Dad? You can keep your old town and team from covers. We're going back to where, no matter what people are, they don't try to stop people from laughing and having a good time if they were wrong. All you want to be is mean and saving things and hurt people. You're mean and Paul Pettinger. <laughs> And on Friday, 
Friday night, rather than our usual educational film, which was going to be the life cycle of the earthworm, we shall give you Tyrone Power in South Sea Love. <laughs> and now I give you the family who've shown us we're never too old to enjoy ourselves. Our heaven-sent shot in the arm, the three Valentines. Ladies, Ladies and, gentlemen. and gentlemen. That's right, never mind, folks. I'll handle them. I'm used to them. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I could pitch a tent here and make a lot of long speeches, but when you're a one-man chamber of commerce, you haven't got time to make long speeches. <laughs> Is that right, Dixon? You're right. Right. You know, I could go on and tell you how we're going to reopen the stone quarry. Yes, sir, we got enough slate and granite there to last us for years. Is that right, Sam? That's right. Right. Oh, I could tell you a lot of things, folks, but you know, the main thing is we all want to be happy, because that's all that counts in life, believe me, folks. Is happiness. Isn't that right, Dacre, my pal? You're right, Joey. Thank you, brother. If I'm not mistaken there, neighbor, I think that's your cue. So, uh, Wendy and Kitty, you ready? Here's a little tune that always helps you when you're blue. Just a pretty little ditty, and you ought to learn it, too. It will cheer you up whenever skies above are gray. When things go wrong, it's just the song to chase your cares away, 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 away and, and everything, everything will be okay. Tra-la-la-la, what a merry world we live in. Tra-la-la-la, -la -la, all of it is yours and mine. So wear a smile, sing a little while it's raining. And through the clouds, every little star will shine. You live and learn, things are going to turn out fine. Just feel that way, and every little day will seem like spring. If you'll just sing tra la la, tra la 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 la, tra la la, tra la la, tra la 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 la. 